This is a Coley Phillip. People say it's grey. Uh, honestly, if you look at it here and now, next to the greaseproof paper, it's delicious. It isn't grey. It is greyer than cod, admittedly, but it's beautiful. Look at it. It's flaky, meaty, it's succulent. Uh, absolutely, I have no problem using coli instead of cod every single day, and nor should you. You should be asking for it. It's delicious. Use a korma curry paste. Take a nice tablespoon of that. Coli is a brilliant carrier of flavours, whether it's Spanish, Moroccan, Asian flavours. We're going Indian, and it can handle it. The great thing as well is you're going to have that curry flavour on the outside and that lovely, clean sweetness on the inside. It's a brilliant, brilliant fish. We've got a pan. Let's have it on a medium heat. Um, I've got the paste on there. You can get this paste in every single supermarket in the country, and it saves you a load of work. Don't get the sauce. Don't like that. Paste, rock and roll. Good flavours. So I'm going to get some nice, beautiful... Fillets of coli, season it with salt, olive oil in a pan. I'm going to put the coli spice side down first and just sort of press it, introduce those spices to the fish. It's that kind of encrustment of the lovely Indian spices. Coli honestly can be used instead of haddock or cod. You know, you can use it instead of your cod and chips, you can have your, your coli and chips. Uh, lots of supermarkets have it now. Good fishmongers have it, absolutely, as well. So let's just turn that over. Look at that. You can see it starting to flake already. It's encrusted that spice on there. I mean, also, the outrageous thing is this fish is literally one of the cheapest fish you can buy. This fillet will take about eight minutes to cook. The whole thing about the big fish fight is this fish is brilliant. This fish is so available. It's half the price than cod. I love it. You can do anything with it. You guys have just got to ask for coli. Create a demand and literally, by making the right choice and feeding your family a beautiful dinner, you can really make a difference to what's happening out there in the sea. We've got colour on the spice side. We've got a little bit of cooking happening on the skin side. I want to show you how to make the world's quickest sauce. I've got myself three or four spring onions here. Sprinkle that into the pan like that. Another tablespoon of spice goes in and around the pan. The pan's now on full whack. And then I've got coconut milk. Literally half a tin makes all the difference. It's so good, so simple, so quick. And literally, if you've got a grumpy old man that likes his curry, would never have a bit of fish in his curry in a million years, cook it for him because he will smile and he will eat it. You can pimp it up with some chilli. And I've got some nice coriander here. If you're ever nervous about is your fish cooked, dead simple. All you do, you go to the fish, don't wonder and worry. All oh, food poisoning, I'll overcook it a bit more so it'll taste a bit more horrible. If it flakes, right, that's cooked. There's no way that would happen if it was undercooked. So, this is done. Let's serve up this beautiful food, get ourselves our rice. Look at that beautiful fish supper. Get some of that gorgeous curry. A brilliant dinner. A little sprinkling of the chilli and spring onions from a height. Wedge of lemon, brilliant coli korma. Let's have a little go. Oh, my Lord. Get in there. So damn good. Coley Korma, a supper to help save the sea. Great. So we've got pouting here. Have a little look at this. It's a beautiful fish. The same family as cod. There is absolutely no reason that every single fish and chip shop can go on to pouting. It's a brilliant thing. You can get it in fishmongers. You can get it in big, good uh, uh, supermarkets that have a fish counter. So let me show you how to cook pouting and fall in love with it like I have. So what I want to do first of all is hit it with a little bit of seasoning. Hit it with a little bit of flour, regular flour. Just one egg. And that's going to allow whatever we put on top of it to stick to the fish. The first time I tried pouting was this year. I'm, you know, and it's kind of unforgivable, really. I'm into food, I'm into fish, but all chefs and the public, we've just never heard of these fish before. They've never been made famous, do you know what I mean? And for me, it's like a brand new band that's just come out of nowhere. Pouting, for me, in every single way, is as good as cod. End of story. It's delicious, it's buttery, it's flaky, it's juicy. You know, it's a wonderful carrier of flavours. You can spice it. I'm just putting it in a little egg and then into some breadcrumbs. You know, I'm going to leave one whole, like a nice fillet, sort of adult styly. And then also, you know, because a lot of us are cooking for kids and stuff all the time, I'm just going to cut one of these into three, skin side down, into a pan. Next time you go to buy your cod, ask for pouting. And if they haven't got it, 
ask them why. I think what you guys at home don't realise is that when you go and ask for something, the world starts to change. The temptation when you're cooking like this with any fish is to keep touching it, shaking it, turning it, prodding it. Use your instincts, right? You can see what's going on. If you look in here now, see there? You can see the frying taking place. Listen, you can hear if it's going too fast. It's frying nicely. What I want to do to go with it is some really nice sweet potato chips. Dead simple. Let me show you how simple it is. Just a couple of ingredients. Sweet potatoes, give them a scrub. Um, delicious, a little bit different. Half it, quarter it. And then just carefully put your fingers either side of the quarter and gently cut down like that. Make yourself a nice little wedgie. Sweet potatoes are sweet, they're nutty, and there's a few little tricks to make them gorgeous. So a little, a little salt, a little pepper. You can put some herbs and garlic in there if you want. But for me, try this. This is smoked paprika, you can get it everywhere. And just like a little half teaspoon of this from a height, just so it goes everywhere, is brilliant. Little olive oil. And whack those in an oven at about 180 degrees Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit, for about 35, 40 minutes. You know when they're ready because they look gorgeous. And when you eat one, they taste good. So give them a toss up. And what's nice is all that flavor sticks to the sweet potato. So I've got some in the oven going already. Let's show you how to turn this. Get it under there and just literally turn it over. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see the whole texture of that. That is a first class, Formula One, brilliant fish. I'm going to sort of like pimp up this beautiful fish by bashing up some basil. Bog standard mayonnaise going in there. It will go a beautiful sort of pastel green colour. Lemon. Have a taste. We're in a good place. This is what those beautiful sweet potatoes look like when they're done. They're gorgeous. They sort of shrivel up, go crispy and really intensify. Let's plate up this beautiful, beautiful fish. And what's nice is you can see that gorgeous texture of the fish there. Just a couple of these little chips on the side. A nice little spoon of this gorgeous cheats basil mayo. But it's brilliant, really is brilliant with it. And there you go, a beautiful dinner. Let me just break into that. You can see, literally, how deliciously flaky and gorgeous that fish is. Go out, get yourself some pouting. Mm. Introducing Mr. Dab. It's delicious, it's flaky, it's sweet, it's juicy. It tastes just like lemon salt. I'm gonna cook it mediterranean styley with some crispy bacon, some herbs. Let me show you how to do it. Score it down to the bone. That's gonna speed up the cooking. A little olive oil. First thing that's gonna go in is some smoked pancetta or smoky bacon, pine nuts. So we've got some salt on our fish here. We've got some pepper. We've got some parsley, lemon. Like that, on a zester, you get some beautiful flavour. Rub that flavour in, into all the cuts. Look at that, beautiful. Very similar to turbot, which is one of the most expensive fish in the sea. Obviously, we're cooking fish on the bone. A lot of people get nervous about cooking fish on the bone. You know, really and truly, if you want the best fish in the world, always cook it on the bone because you get that beautiful moisture, uh, juiciness and succulence. So I'm just going to shake these pine nuts and the crispy bacon off. Beautiful dab, the most underrated fish in the world. I want to put it skin side down. I'm just going to turn this fish over. Look at that. You know, I know Brits sadly are scared of fish on the bone, but like, there's no little fiddly bones in here. It's just one big flat one, you know, Tom and Jerry style that just comes out in the middle. Let's add some fragrant flavors. So tomatoes go in here as well. Then we're going to throw in a few olives. Nice chunks of parsley here. Look at that. So give it a good old shake. And we can put the pine nuts and bacon back in the pan. 
this dish is ready to go. Dress myself a nice salad, half a lemon. Now, lemon juice in a pan will burn within about 40 seconds, OK, because it's got lots of sugar in it. So we give it one last shake to get all those beautiful flavours off. Then we take it off the heat and let's serve one of these up. Look at this. This is a great dish from probably the most wasted fish in the sea. This, ladies and gentlemen, is dab. The wonderful world of herring. A much underloved, brilliant fish. Actually, one of my favourite fishes in the sea. Britain has fallen out of love with. You know, there's parts of the Nordic, Sweden that absolutely adore and revere the beautiful herring. But not us. About 97% of all the herring that gets landed gets taken elsewhere. So we really do treat this pretty badly. I think one of the reasons that puts us funny old Brits off of herring is because if you take the fillet off, there is a little row of small bones here. And I think that's probably part of its downfall because, you know, we get a bit lazy. Well, we are lazy. Um, so let me show you a way of absolutely getting over that. I'm going to start at the tail and work all the way down like that. And all of a sudden, you've got a beautiful sort of goujon that has zero, zero bones. And then on this one, run the knife down, and there you go. There's your bones. First job up, let's get the pasta in. Get your hand around the spaghetti or the linguine and give it a twist. A little bit of a basket weave on there. By twisting it, it kind of falls onto itself in a way that doesn't just make it sort of stick and lid on. So, back to the herrings. Um, we've taken the bones off of these beautiful herrings. I'm going to cook this in quite a Mediterranean way, italian style garlic, just a little bit of chilli to pimp it up. Um, I've got some capers. And then parsley. You want about three or four tablespoons of good extra virgin olive oil. We're going to go straight in with the chilli and the garlic and the capers, all those fragrant things. As soon as the garlic starts to take on a little bit of colour, that's when we dump our beautiful herring in. And when you're buying herring, by the way, look for the MSC approved tick. It's a blue tick that you'll find on the packet because the MSC is the best that we've got as far as monitoring fish sustainability, and we should definitely support them. Look, I'm tossing this fish. You will be amazed how quickly this cooks. Look at that. And at this stage in the game, we can go in with a few tomatoes. Add the juice of one lemon. You can see it's starting to break up now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring that pasta over to our beautiful herring. And, you know, what's interesting is don't bother sort of draining the spaghetti or the linguine. Bring that water over. In actual fact, encourage it. Splash some more over. It's that kind of natural emulsion of the fish oils and the olive oils and the flavour that mixes up with the water that's starchy from there. And it's that that gives it that lovely lightness that is beautiful. So what I want to do now is just toss it, toss it. Because it's like a moving target. Perfection in pasta is a moving target. If I put this pasta down now, perfect, in three minutes' time, it'll be miserable and claggy again. So that's why Italian mamas are like, sit down, get your plates ready. Are you ready? And it's literally like a race. Taste it. Delicious. And look at that. A beautiful, beautiful, world-class herring pasta. If you gave that to a Sicilian, all right, it wouldn't be as good as their mama, but they would love it. I've got a pan on, medium heat. I've got these lovely trout fillets. You can buy them like this, already filleted. Trout is gorgeous, it's flaky, it's wonderful. I'm going to season this trout first, flesh side up. A little bit of sea salt on there, a little bit of pepper. And then I want to flip that over. Do the same as well. Get yourself some time. Just cut the sort of tips off, sort of the last inch and a half there. Go straight in a pan with some olive oil. It'll spit like that always. Put the trout fillets on top of some of that thyme and push it down. We're going to cook it about 95% of the time, skin side down. Why are we doing that? Because we're going to get beautiful, crackly skin, you know, almost as gorgeous as your pork scratchings, yeah? People are scared of cooking fish, right? And the thing is, it's so quick. You know, trout's got lovely sort of essential oils, omega-3 and stuff like that. It's great. It's the sort of thing that I feed my kids at least once a week. And while that's cooking, I've got some yoghurt, a couple of tablespoons, some lemon juice and some horseradish. I like to get the stuff that's just grated, like that. You want to convince this that it's savoury by a little 
little pinch of salt. So have a little taste of your yogurt. Brilliant. OK, so while that's frying away, doing a great job, give it a little jiggle about. What I'm going to do is get some beetroots. Now, I want to clank these beets into little quarters. So the beets are going in there. Let's have a little swig of olive oil. And then we're going to bring it to life with a little balsamic vinegar and a pinch of salt and give it a little toss-up, it's going to be gorgeous. Now, like salmon, trout love to be smoked. Uh, it's similar to the flavour of salmon. It's subtler. I think it's slightly sweeter. Uh, I actually prefer it. Have a little look. That's what we're trying to achieve. See how we got it really crispy there? I'm going to actually put it back on its skin. What's great about this method is the skin goes really crispy and the fish is being protected, so it's flaky, it's juicy, it's gorgeous. So I'm going to take that even a little bit more. So I've got some boiled potatoes, just get two or three and squash them in your plate like that. And then let's come over to this trout. Fold it over, look at that. It's cooked now, so that's literally 20 seconds on the flesh. And what I want to do now is hit the pan now off the heat with lemon juice and jiggle it about. That lemon juice will just evaporate and give a nice sourness to that fish. Let's plate it out, let's do it. Two little fillets per portion. The crispy skin, it feels like the best bits of a roast pork. The horseradish, I can't tell you how well that eats. It's incredible. And then just a few little beets. Absolutely gorgeous. Little bit of lovely old watercress. And there you go, guys. Let's have a little try of this. You see how flaky that is? Beautiful. Mm. Horseradish on your trout. Absolutely brilliant. Really good. That method of cooking the fish, you'll use it again and again and again, and it will look after you, and it will look after the fish. So look, we've got these beautiful crabs here in the shell. So 500 grams of boiled potatoes. Little bit of salt, little bit of pepper. So we're going to put an equal quantity of crab into it. The great thing about the stuff you can get in the supermarkets or your fishmongers is it's all picked and done for you. Get the brown meat in there and the white meat. I mean, fish cakes are a brilliant way to get omega-3 in the fish into kids. Kids go mad for them, but also the adults do as well. Give it a little stir up and just mash those potatoes and the crab together. You get more incredible flavour from the brown meat and you get lovely texture from the white meat. I'm using some parsley, nice big handful on the board, and I want the zest of lemon, and it's going to work so well with the crabs. A little bit of this chilli, as much or as little as you want, and spring onions to give it a bit of a hum. So I'm using three. You can peel back the outer leaves if they need it. Chop it up and go as fine or as coarse as you want, and then use the knife to pick up and drop it in. You squeeze it all together. In the British Isles, we've got good, clean, cold water, so we've got some of the best shellfish in the world. You know, we should be eating more crab. So look, here's our crab cake mix. You see how many that makes. I'm going to half it and then half it again, just roughly. We make them into little crab cakes like that. Get the Brits eating crabs again. The point of this in the fish fight is if you guys create new markets for things like crab, you can eat your way out of trouble. The pan is sort of a medium heat. I'm going to put olive oil in here. What we want to do is crispen them up on both sides. The nice thing about crabs is they're caught in pots. So the pot goes down, crabs go in, have a little snuggle up, we pull them up. It's not ruining the bottom of the seabed. Often the people that go crab potting, they're small family businesses, so it's supporting people that need your support. You know, you just pat them down and literally a minute and a half, two minutes on each side until they're crispy and golden delicious. That's going to give me enough time to make this kick-ass salsa. These tomatoes and peppers and chilies, we've blackened it in the pan. Just slice it up like that. A little bit of spring onion in there, just to give it a crunch. A little pinch of salt, pepper, three tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to use lemon juice. Acid and chilli is what's going to make it sing. Choose a herb. I'm going to go basil, and that's just going to be absolutely delicious. This kind of salsa, great on any grilled or roasted fish you like as long as it's from our top ten list from the fish fight. I'm just going to turn these over. Nice colour. Let's plate this beautiful dish up. You know when they're cooked, when they're crispy on the outside, fluffy in the middle, they're just starting to bust now. Get it on there. Really, really good. Nice big old wodge of rocket in the middle. And then the salsa over the top like that. Gorgeous. This 
is the future. Muscles, completely underrated. Um, the brilliant thing about mussels is they're a farmed shellfish, but you don't have to take fish from elsewhere to feed these. They clean the sea. They're the most sustainable thing that you could eat, so go for it. I'm going to do a beautiful dish, flavours that just work. We've got smoked bacon here, which I'm just going to slice into like little centimetre slices. This will crispen up straight away. You get smoky flavours in the pan. Give it a bit of love and move it around a little bit. Bit of bread. I'm just going to pull out the bacon. So in the pan now is beautiful flavour. That's the first thing that's going to kiss these mussels. Mussels in. Clover garlic. You've got the olive oil. Give it a good old shake. A swig of cider, literally a quarter of a pint, and then the lid goes on top and forget about them. And you can make the best toasts by just rubbing a bit of garlic.